Hi friends, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Pathways of Hope, a daily reflection on the gospel and the hope that it brings to us in these times. My name is Ted and I'll be sharing some insights on the gospel for today. Today is Saturday, June 27, 2020, and the gospel reading for today is taken from the gospel according to John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Today we celebrate Mary as our mother of perpetual help. And in today's gospel, we hear about the wedding at Cana and Jesus' first miracle when he turns the water into wine. I want to focus on four things from today's gospel that will tell us why Mary is the mother of perpetual help. First, the gospel tells us in verse 1 when this event happened. On the third day. In the earlier verses of John's Gospel, we are told that Jesus had decided to go to Galilee from Judea. And so we know that Cana in Galilee is a three-day walk. But aside from the geographical information, John's use of the third day is symbolically significant. John's mention of the third day is a reference to what is seen elsewhere in the scriptures. It is, of course, a reference to the fact of the resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus had not yet taken place, of course, but even the Old Testament refers to the, th to the third day as being the day in which Israel would be spiritually healed and returned to her Lord. John's hint of the resurrection gives us the significance of Jesus' first miracle. It was a miracle of transformation, of bringing life out of death. Second, the disaster at the wedding, the wine runs out. And just like a mother, Mary is the one who notices. And she tells Jesus simply, they have no wine. Mary does not ask Jesus to do anything. She merely tells him. And though she may have been referring to the actual fact, that the wine at the wedding had run out. Mary's words to Jesus also hold a deeper meaning and truth for us. There comes a day when the wine runs out in our lives. The glass is empty. The party is over. On that day, life is dry, without vibrancy or vitality. Everything is bland, without flavor or color. And though living, we are less than fully alive. So Mary's words to Jesus confront us with serious questions. Where in our lives has the wine run out? What relationships have become dry? What parts of our lives remain empty? Third, Jesus' response to Mary. O woman, what have you to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Hearing that, they actually sound rude, but they actually aren't. The words of Jesus, in fact, called to mind his answer to Mary and Joseph when he was found at the temple. Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Jesus was not saying to Mary, that he would not do anything, as in fact he did. What he was telling his mother was, I know what you want to happen here, but what I will do will not convince them that I am who I am. Ultimately, Jesus' words were words of obedience to Mary, but also to God the Father. Though it was not yet his time, according to the Father's plan. Because his mother brought it up, Jesus would act. Fourth, Mary's instructions to the servants. Do whatever he tells you. This is probably the only recorded instance of Mary interceding with Jesus in her words to the servants. Do whatever he tells you. Mary did not know what Jesus would do exactly. All she knew was that Jesus would do something. 
the day when the wine runs out is the beginning of a miracle. And it starts with someone noticing that our life has run dry. And the miracle comes when Jesus fills our dry wine jars with rich red wine. Mary is our mother of perpetual help. She is the one who will notice that our life has run dry. She is the one who will tell Jesus that there is nothing left in our lives. She is the one who intercedes for us with the simple instruction, do whatever he tells you. And when we do that, Christ does not simply refill our wine jar. He transforms our lives, turning water into wine, watering our dry, arid lives with rich red wine. On the third day of our lives, our cups overflow with rich wine, intoxicating us with God's life, inebriating us with Christ's blood, and leaving us with the inspiration and influence of the Holy Spirit. That is the miracle at Cana, but that is the miracle that we want every day in our lives. I pray today as Mary, our mother of perpetual help, reminds us that I may do whatever Jesus tells me. I pray that you may be blessed with grace to do the same. Friends, if you have been made more hopeful by this short commentary, please do spread that hope by sharing this with your friends. Again, this has been Pathways of Hope. Thank you for listening. God bless us all.